Welcome back, everybody. On today's author show and tell, we have Bram Stoker award winning author Gwendolyn Kai. Stick around. <laughs> another author show and tell everybody i'm gabby triana i'm the author of the haunted florida series paradise island a sam and colby story my new gothic horror novel moon child and lots lots more so on today's show and tell is the author of the bram stoker nominated the invention of ghosts which i love boneset and feathers the rust maidens and other tales of witchy horror and decay if you guess gwendolyn keist you're not only right but you're in for a treat here to show you something that I know you're going to love is Gwendolyn Keist herself. Take it away. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn Keist, and I am the author of The Rust Maidens and Bone Set and Feathers, and I am here today for the author show and tell. So thank you so much to Gabby for inviting me to be here because I'm super excited to be doing this. So I'm thinking a lot about this, and I kind of knew from the get-go what I wanted to show everyone and it is this contact print or proof sheet of Sharon Tate in the movie Eye of the Devil. So first of all this is a reproduction proof sheet. This is not an original alas. I'm not even sure you can get those online and that's where I got this. So and it's also this it didn't come with this. This is it's actually I have this framed in my office and I had to take it out of the frame because the frame was given a bunch of glare. So you can see it's like uh, just a photo paper there. So let's start with Sharon. Anybody who knows me or has seen me online for very long knows I am a huge, huge fan of Sharon Tate. I have been a fan of Sharon Tate since I was like a little kid. I was like four or five years old when I saw her for the first time on the box art for the VHS way back in the day of VHS, for the movie The Fearless Vampire Killers, which both my parents were fans of. And then I, I saw her in that. And then I also saw her as Janet, the secretary in the Beverly Hillbillies, which is the thing where a lot of people have seen her, if you have seen Sharon. Um, of course, I learned very early on about how she died, which is still probably the most famous thing about Sharon Tate, sadly. And I'm not going to spend any time talking about that. If you want to know about it, you can Google it or you probably already know that about Sharon Tate. The thing about it is Sharon Tate had an absolutely wonderful, beautiful, incredible life before that. And, and that's what I, I want to focus on. And unfortunately, I think a lot more people are focusing on that now. I feel like over the last few years, we've had a lot more focus on her life. There was the homage to Sharon in Mad Men with Megan Draper. Sharon Tate is like perfect for Instagram. There's lots of really great pictures of her from both her acting and her modeling days on Instagram. And then most famously, you have... Uh, once Upon a Time in Hollywood with Margot Robbie playing Sharon. And speaking of that, my, my hair and makeup I actually did today in honor of Sharon as well. This hairstyle is a very just simple little 60s hairstyle. Uh, she, Sharon actually did this in at Cannes in 1968, and then Margot Robbie actually redid it when she went to Cannes for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So I was like, okay, that's going to be the hairstyle I'm going to do. And then for my eye makeup, Sharon was known for having like very kind of graphic eyeliner, as they say, and in particular something called floating eyeliner or the banana, which is, you can see, it kind of looks like and it looks like a banana. It's just like a banana there. So that's that's why my hair and makeup's this way. Not that probably anybody was wondering, but I'm going to tell you anyhow. So specifically to this movie, Eye of the Devil, where these stills were taken, it is such a strange movie. If you haven't ever seen it, it was available for on Prime for a while. I'm hoping you could still get it somewhere and stream it somewhere. It seems like movies disappear so quickly anymore. But it is a 1966 uh, British horror film. It's folk horror. It actually is so much like The Wicker Man. And yet it predates The Wicker Man by like seven years. It was based on a book called Day of the Arrow. And Sharon co-stars as Odile. And she is a very stylish, a very creepy, yet beautiful witch. And 
The movie also stars, it's got this incredible cast, Deborah Carr, David Niven, Donald Pleasance, David Hemmings plays Sharon's brother. And it is so strange. And I've seen other people talk about this. It, it's very much almost like two different styles of filmmaking all, all in one. Uh, in Howard David Ingham's book, We Don't Grow Back, they talk about this, about how it feels like it's like an art film from like this kind of melodrama era, but it also feels very, very modern and kind of almost what they were producing in the later 60s. So it's just a very strange, strange movie. And I do wish it had more appreciation among horror fans because, you know, there's a lot of love for The Wicker Man and it's a very similar movie. And again, it, it predated it by, by a number of years and it, it's, I don't want to give too much away, but there is, there's witchcraft and there's just so much with the occult and there's just bird imagery. And it's definitely this movie, but Sharon in particular has been very just influential really for me as a creator. And the title story in my debut collection, And Her Smile Will Untether the Universe, was inspired in part by Sharon Tate. And so her presence has just very much loomed for me in my life, and she was known by everyone to just be such a truly kind person. Like, normally you have people that over time people will come forward and be like, eh, they weren't really as nice as everybody said. But with Sharon, everyone, even even when it was the 50th anniversary of, of her death in, in 2019, everyone was just talking about how she was just the sweetest person, and she was just like this beam of light. And... And so I feel like that's someone very much that, that you would want to, to keep their legacy alive because, and she was so talented. She never really got a lot of credit for how talented she was. A lot of people were just like, oh, she's beautiful. And, and that would be the end of it. Even in Eye of the Devil, she gives this really unnerving performance. And you can even look up clips of it on YouTube, although I would tell you to go find the movie because it's really, really worth watching. But she just, it, she's very strange in it. And a lot of people say that, oh, it's not even her voice. She was dubbed. And yet I've done a lot of research into that. And I could never, ever find a source other than just like bored bloggers saying, oh, no, no, it doesn't sound like her. So it can't be her. And maybe it was dubbed. They certainly did dubbing back then. But I never found anything that, that could confirm that. And yet people kept replicating that about her. And it's sad to me how much women are kind of denied their even their work, you know, this is her performance and people years later, you know, are still trying to be like, oh, it's not really hers. So or she was, she was just dubbed. That's not really her voice. And it's almost like this way of kind of stealing her voice from her, even from beyond the grave without any kind of evidence that she was dubbed. And to me, that's sadly something that has happened over the years with Sharon's legacy. And, and like I said, the, it has been really nice to see over the last couple of years in particular of more people really talking about her work and really kind of revisiting her work and recognizing that it's not, you know, it, it's not the negative things that a lot of people are focused on because I would even see people be like, oh, I was heard she wasn't a very good actress. And, and that's just not true. She was a very, very good actress. And it, it's sad. And one of the things I'm always trying to do is to find, you know, the, the women who have been deleted and have been, you know, underappreciated over the years. And I think that these are the people that, you know, really were are worthy of being reclaimed and having their work looked at again and reexamined. So, that's that's definitely something I'm always I'm always talking about Sharon. I always make the, the joke on social media that people are probably tired of it, but not 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 gonna stop. Even did a whole video today. So yep, so I'm gonna go in, try to get close. Can't tell if this is focusing or not. Till I get my ring light in there. So yeah, so that's my uh my eye of the devil, Sharon Tate show and tell. Again, I would highly, highly encourage anybody, especially if you like folk horror, or you're a horror fan and you haven't seen it, it is such a bizarre movie. So I have the devil. Hopefully you can find it streaming. You can also get it on Blu-ray. I have a copy of it on Blu-ray. And it's it's definitely worth your time, especially if you are really into into folk horror. If you like The Wicker Man and want to see something that kind of predates it. And it, it's really, it's really a, it's an odd little movie. And I think it's very worth your time. And look up Sharon. Look her up on Instagram. She's She's great if you don't know anything about her except the the negative stuff. She's definitely worthy of of looking taking a second look at. So and as for me, I think I'm supposed to like say something. I think Gabby said something about uh doing at least a little bit of a plug for myself. But I mean, honestly, if you just look up Sharon Tate after this video, I'm happy. But I do have a new book. It is called Bone Set and Feathers. It actually was very, very loosely inspired by 
the entire kind of folk horror, kind of occult horror, the that I of the devil uh, belongs to that that sort of subgenre. And actually, I I do I can say related to this is that. In Eye of the Devil, Sharon's character's name is Odile, and I actually named my character in my book Odette as a uh, reference to that, so Odette and Odile from, from the Black Swan Ballet. So there is a little bit of a reference to Eye of the Devil in my book, Bone Set and Feathers, so I guess this is related. So, so you know, watch Eye of the Devil, and then maybe if you're, if you're interested, you can read my book, Bone Set and Feathers, out now from Broken Eye Books. So... Thank you so much to Gabby for inviting me to do this. This was really, really fun. And I'm going to make you guys all look at Sharon one more time. Thanks so much. <laughs> I don't think anybody minds looking at that amazing proof sheet of Sharon Tate again. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Gwendolyn. I love Sharon Tate, but you're right. I don't think she gets enough credit for what a good actress she was, and I've never seen Eye of the Devil, but now that you mention it being a lot like The Wicker Man, I'm all about it. And for anyone curious to watch Eye of the Devil, you can find it on Amazon Prime, Vudu, Apple TV, though I think you might have to pay like $2.99 to rent it or something. Anyway, that was super fun. I loved your banana eye makeup and I loved the jack-o'-lantern art that was behind you on the wall. Uh, thank you for sharing that inspiring piece, especially since it inspired me to go check out Eye of the Devil right now. So thanks, Gwendolyn. And for everyone at home, go check out all of Gwendolyn's books, including Boneset and Feathers. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, don't forget to leave a comment down below, hit that like and subscribe button, and uh, that'll let me know to keep making videos for you guys here on the Witch Hunt. So have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>